Hello, it's Mubit here from Mubit Media, Gaming Ads at Code UK and all that lovely stuff here with a new toy review for you, hence the boring white background. And I got really back into Transformers collecting um, just before Prime came along. But I, it was the Prime figures that really caught my imagination, to be honest. Um, I mean, I've always picked up the G1 stuff if I ever saw it at car boot or what have you, just because that's what I grew up with, you know? Um, but um, one of my favourite characters is Soundwave, and the new Prime, well, now the old Prime Soundwave, is this guy. And I think he's a brilliant piece of design and engineering. He's kind of cool. He looks completely different to, you know, G1 Soundwave, but he still has this kind of weird hunchback menacing thing. His character in the show is brilliant. He's got a little laser beak there, so he's still got the homage to the minions in the chest. And I think he's brilliant. He's pride of place on my shelf, that guy. Love him to bits. But they've now, with the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters line, have been redoing the same moulds, but slightly more spiky, and with different paint jobs. So now we've got to offer this, which is the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Soundwave, which, instead of having a laser beak, has now got Ravage, as you can see, ish, just there. Bit of a garish paint job, but we'll see what it looks like in hand. Um, we'll move old sound wave out of the way for one moment, and we'll get on with the packaging right here. So there we go. So there's Ravage in his little, his little beastie glory. Looks very similar to Laserbeak in the spikiness. But I like that little torch. He's got a little gun grappling hook gun thing that fires. And there's Soundwave himself. Lots of yellows and blues and blacks. The usual Beast Hunters logos on there. You've got all the warnings that you get in Europe. No bios or anything. Just a sad onion face. Transforms Collectors Club. And then on the back, you have got um, Talon, Grappon, Talon Grapple Cannon Ravage. And then a very spiky looking sound wave. And his, instead of being like a drone now, it looks like he's some kind of almost bird-like thing with his spikes on there. But I'll tell you what, enough of that. Let's get him open, because obviously I'm trying to keep this, this review relatively short compared to my other ones, just because our friends in the US have already reviewed this guy when they came, because he came out over there first. Let's get him open, see what he looks like. And here he is, opened up and out of his packaging and into his bird plane mode thing. Um, got some comparisons for you in a moment with this guy. But um, inside the box you get, as per everything in Europe, a big ass um, warning leaflet labely thing. And you also get the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters. Uh, you get the instructions, but you also get, a on the regular version, you get a bio, but on this one, sod all. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, look, nothing there. So that's how you transform it. There's the um, weapons instructions and how, to t and how to take Ravage out. But yeah, on the US versions, you get the wireframe like you do there. And then you get a little bio on what the gun is, and then also like a made-up storyline that doesn't really follow Transformers Prime Beast Hunters the show here, about how they get their weapons and things. And it's just blank. Very strange. So I thought I'd show you that. If you want to know what should be written on there, um, go to Peel's review. Um, he's probably one of the best guys to do it. And uh, he reads it out, and also Octobotmus does as well. Um, but yeah, here he is. Back, back to the thing in question. I'm going to be relatively brief with these because like I say they've already been reviewed reviewed this guy and straight away you notice a comparison in terms of the bird mode this you've got sleek kind of aerial drone type situation just here not a lot to it but I really think that's a brilliant alt mode for sound waves especially this day and age it's not just things cassettes so yeah of course he'd be an unmanned drone listening out for things of course he would perfect and then we'll set him off back there and then in comparison 
there he is. It's slightly mistransformed. I can't get that to tab together very well, but there you go. He looks more like same drone, basic drone shape, but he's got lots more spikes and lots of. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. Let's see, see if I can get it focused. There, the paintwork is like this golden purple flashes and blotches and speckles in there. I think it's supposed to make it look a bit more organic. You can see it just along here as well. Not very hidden anymore. He's got two Decepticon symbols there and there, whereas this one obviously hasn't. Um, and, you know, there are some bits that are similar and some bits that are new moulds. As you can see, look at the wings. The wings are completely different. Nothing, di nothing the same about them at all. Oh, apart from the blue bit here is present on this one. But here you've got a little bit of pink on here. It's blue and you've got the um, Decepticon symbol. That bit's similar to that bit, but then on this bit you've got the spikes. Can you see that? You've got the spikes just there, whereas this one has got grills for the engines. And obviously this piece is all new. Very spiky, very blah blah blah. And you've got ports for the gun, which I'll show you in a moment. The back piece has got, you've got two fins on the back, whereas this one's got three. And uh, the front to me, you've got spikes on the front compared to compared to this one. This piece is the same. This piece is the same here on the top. This piece is different to this piece because this has got all lots of spikes and things on there. Put that on the top there, there you go. Spikes and things coming off here. Spiky, spiky, spiky. You've got a, uh, the detail of a turbine in there. Let's see if I can... Uh, Focus on there, there you go. So you've got the detail of a turbine just there, which is lovely, which you don't have on here, you just have some pink and things. Um, the front wise, because of the turbines, it almost looks like eyes, if you can see, just about see that, there's one eye, there's two eyes. And also, this is now almost a beak, the front. This is quite tricky to do with one hand, give me a moment. There we go. So the front, you've still got landing gear for some reason, which is I'd put this as more as a bird. And then you can almost have it like a beak where the front parts, you know, open up and he then he talks, hello, if you wanted. The one thing that isn't noticeable on here is is the cockpit here is plastic. This is soft rubber, which is a ball egg. I don't know why they're doing that at the moment, or if it's a cost saving exercise or whether it's just to stop kids poking their eyes out. Like this is a rubber here, but it's kind of a hard rubber, whereas this is really soft and pliable. Whereas that bit in the middle is hard plastic. Go figure. Can't figure that out. Back's pretty much the same. No changes there apart from the paint job. Uh, and underneath is, you know, the usual sound wave, but this one's just looks like an explosion in a paint factory. So, yeah. Some similarities, some similarities, some differences. Obviously, the paint job being the most notice, noticeable change. This one looks a bit more organic and bird-like, I guess, whereas this is a bit more sleek and spy drone-like. Um, I'm not going to transform them on camera just because I've reviewed them already. So we're going to go from this to something that looks a bit like this. Um, and I have to say, the robot mode is a lot better. Um, than the vehicle mode. The vehicle mode is just a bit of a cluster F and frankly the robot mode is an acquired taste let's say that is very garish. The yellow stands out like a sore thumb and there are some changes made from the original mold which is over here that continue and also continue to annoy. For example the feet because these bits aren't hard plastic, they're actually rubber on the new one. He's very hard to stand up. Well, he was just then, to be fair. But they're very, very soft rubber, so they they don't lend well to standing up. I've had to actually get them locked in. Another thing, and it, might, it might just be mine, but the joints are a little bit loose. Um, again, I don't know whether that's a QC issue, whether that's just the new ones because they're using softer plastic, then like, this is a rubber, very soft rubber here, whereas this is a, a plasticky, rubbery thing. The fingers are still the same same rubberiness, but the whole thing here is soft rubber now, along here, 
whereas this is just the rubber fingers and then hard plastic to there. So that's a bit annoying. It just feels cheaper because of that rubber. But having said that, they do look quite different. Um, the legs, because of the extra kibble on the new one, you cannot pause and put a pose in the sort of chicken leg kind of thing that this this figure is designed for um, because the rubber is so soft like here and the joints that that's yellow bit there seems to be softer I think it's just on mine that I think it's just the actual um, hinges are um, a bit loose which a bit of super glue would you know to thicken the joint would um, fix that but because of that you can't get the chicken leg thing but then on the flip side of that because you have to stand him up quite straight because of the way the legs are and because of the way the feet are a bit air, it actually makes them look different enough because it looks like he's all really slouchy and small and, and, and you know, a bit yeah, ice master kind of thing. Whereas this, he's all tall and almost regal because of his analytic new ways. That's how I like to think of it as well. You'll also notice the difference in the chest. In fact, we'll do the head. We'll do the, we'll do a close up, some close up first. I'm not very um, focused on stuff today. Excuse the pun. <laughs> There's a new head sculpt. All gold, some sil some all gold, some silver here. These are quite rubberized as well, but there are more spikes this time. A few more bits of crown. So you got old versus new. There you go. So very very slightly different face sculpt. Uh, just there's like a little sticky in bit just there uh, versus plain face mold on that one. So very 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 slightly different, but not massively different. Um, you'll notice the chests are different because you've got laser beak in here and you've got ravage inside here, and I love that. That's why I bought this figure because it's got ravage in there. Um, I'm a G1 fanboy, so. You know, Soundwave always had his minions in his chest. And that's why I liked this one. So we we take Laserbeak out, and I can't get Soundwave to stand back up and stand up, naughty boy. There we are. So Laserbeak comes out like that, and then it's a bit of a transformation to get his wings. And there is Laserbeak. We'll give a, give you a close up of Laserbeak. He says with bated breath. There you go. There's laser beak, pops out of his chest, away you go, and he sits on his hand quite nicely. You can pose him, as you saw at the beginning of the video, he's got a hole in his hand there that post, posts it, goes in there, and you can get him holding laser beak report, kind of a thing. So you've got that. Here you've got Ravage, who is a bit who doesn't mould in with the chest as much as laser beak. He sticks out quite a bit, which is in my opinion a bit of annoyance um, but he is quite hard to get out actually, give me a moment there we go, so he's out I actually had to use a pair of tweezers then and I just knocked a bit of the paint, chips a little bit of the black paint off there which is again an annoyance um, so, but I can touch that up with a I guess a sharpie or some more paint but it's only a tiny tiny bit just the perfectionist in me Stand up, you little bugger. There he is. So this time we've got Ravage, which comes out of the chest. Come here, you. Focus, you damn thing. Comes out of a chest like that. And then the transformation on this is his legs are already pretty much done. They go in like that. And then these go down like that. And there you've got a little tiny weeny Ravage. How cool is that? And he's lovely, really, to be fair. He's the highlight of the mould. There's there's his head, little little head, heady, heady head. Brown legs, bit of silver on the back, moulded in tail. And you know what? He's quite nice. I like him. I like little Ravage. You can get him in a kind of a pouncing pose or just, you know walking along. So you've got laser beak, you've got Ravage right there. Nice little addition. 
And that's about it. He's, you know, he's okay. He's, I mean, you can, I'll give you a quick close-up with the paint jobs and things. He's all right. He's a very, he's an acquired taste, like I say, with a paint job. Some people will love him. Some people will hate him, I think. A uh, little bit of purple in there. A uh, bit of yellow on the crotch. bit of some browns. He just, some grey, some greeny, bluey colour. It's like they just didn't know how to paint him. They just threw everything at him. You've got some purpley swir swirls there. You've got some gold paint randomly just there rather than yellow like the rest of it. So the paint job is very acquired taste. Um, apart from that, it's very, in terms of a robot mode, is is very similar in terms of articulation and everything to this guy. Um, he's got a bit of an ab crunch. He's got um, a head. He can He can be standing tall like that or he can be slouching down like that. He's got a turn on his head. He's got the full shoulders in out. He's got basically all the arm movements you can ever really need. Elbow joints. Um, he has got a waist swivel, which is always nice, which isn't too obvious as well. Bit of waist swivel. He's got full, fully. Let's put the arms out of the way again. Look, they're loose. Let's the form down. Fully ball jointed hips. He has got uh, a bit of a hinge knee. He has got a bit of a forward hinge to make the chicken leg. And then he's got plenty of movement in his foot, but again, the annoyance is these are really soft rubber feet, so be careful with them. Um, so you can get him into some cool poses, but frankly, you've seen him on the show. All he tends to do is stand around looking menacing, kind of hunched over like that. Maybe not with wonky feet, but you get the general idea with it. He kind of just walks around looking hunched over, as we know. Um, so... That's pretty much the only pose you're ever going to need him in, really. Okay, so we'll get some quick size comparisons for you. Here he is with uh, Wheeljack, um, about the same size, really. So you've got all the jack, 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 jack just there. Um, we'll move original Soundwave back here. Beast Hunter's Bumblebee. Bumblebee's smaller, as as he should be, I think. Uh, we've got a leader class beast hunter -y type situation. Leader class prime figure here. So again, uh, not too bad a size comparison. Obviously, you know, difference between them in the leader class. And you've got Cyberverse Megatron. Cyberverse Megatron there. You've got Cyberverse Commander. Predator King just there. Again, they're all about the same height. Um, Cyberverse comes up to the waist. Uh, these come up to the same height. And the leader class comes up to about here. So, you know, pretty much in scale. And for shits and giggles, there's a bot shot. And there's a Creo. So, you know, you get the general idea of that. And that's my review. Um, if you want some more detailed reviews, um, check out my review of this of the original guy. Um, it's a lot more detailed. Or you can, I'd recommend. Um, let's think. I'd recommend Peel's review for this one. I think he did quite a good review back in the day uh, when this came out early on this year in America. Um, hopefully, you found it enjoying enjoyable i have been Mubit as usual you can find me on, on wordpress at Mubit media and you can find me on youtube.com slash Mubit and i'm the media manager for gamerdads.co.uk mature gaming website come and check us out too until then i'll see you at the next review ta <laughs>